Let's continue in the 70 weeks of Daniel now and show you, and hold on, this is going to shock you. Maybe a lot of you already might know this, but anyone who studied this in depth realizes that all major differences between those who say that the first century in AD 70, that was when the Great Tribulation happened. That's when everything in Matthew 24 happened. And those who say, no, part of Matthew 24's future, part of it was fulfilled back then with the temple destruction in AD 70, yes. But part of its future, the coming of the Lord, every eye shall see him, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, as the lightning shines from the east to the west, uh, as it was in the days of Noah. That's all future, they say. And the whole reason they say that including those who say there's going to be a rebuilt temple, uh, there's going to be a future Antichrist. The whole reason they say that is all because of the way they put a gap between the last week, the 70th, and the week before it, the 69th. They put in there a gap of thousands of years, and they believe it's about 2,000 years because that's where we're at now. And they believe that when the rapture takes place, that's when the 70th week starts up again and then seven years, which is why they say there's a future seven-year tribulation, takes place. Or some of them explain it like this. Well, it's not seven years of tribulation. It's three and a half years of peace. And then in the middle, the Antichrist stops sacrifices in the temple and that begins a three and a half year tribulation period. And then they say Jesus comes either pre-mid or post-tribulation. He comes before the 70th week, and that's what starts the 70th week, or he comes in the middle of the 70th week, that's called mid-trib rapture, or he comes at the end of the 70th week, post-trib rapture. Well, pre, mid, and post, all of them put a gap of thousands of years between the 69th and 70th weeks. And I'm going to show you, and I already said earlier, there's no such gap if you keep on reading this. But let's really talk about it now. Go once again to Daniel 9 and 24. These six things were going to happen for Israel and Jerusalem. Finish the transgression. Make an end of sins, make reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy, and anoint the most holy. And in that period of 409 years, they would happen. But dispensationalism comes along, the new kid on the block in 1830 that nobody believed before 1830, that when verse 27 says, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, Without Daniel being told anything between the, the 62 and the 7 before that, and this final one single week of seven years, they say there's a gap of thousands of years. Show me one verse where the Bible says that the rapture causes the gap of thousands of years to stop, and then the last final 70th week starts up again. It said 490 years would it take for these six things in verse 24 to take place. Well, according to these people, no. It's 2,483 years or something like that, that, that the six things are going to take to come to pass because they think all these things happen in the 70th week and it still hasn't come yet. And we're 2,000 years past the 69th week. You see, the Bible says that the Messiah, the Prince, would come after 62 plus seven weeks. From restoring and rebuilding Jerusalem, that's when the 70 weeks start. That's when the first week starts, the first set of seven years. From there until the Messiah, Jesus, would be seven plus 62, 69 weeks. And then they say the clock stopped. They call it a clock. And then it won't start again for 2,000 years after that, when the rapture takes place. The Bible doesn't say anything about a rapture taking place here to start off the 70th week. And then what people will do is go to Romans 11 and talking about the church as it is today, made up of the remnant of Israelite believers, like Paul himself was a Jew 
Um, he said, I am also an Israelite. God didn't cast away his people Israel. I wouldn't be in the church if I, God cast away Israelites. So God didn't cast them away. But then he says, what's going to happen with these people? They were blinded. That's what happened. God blinded Israel so they couldn't see the truth. And then way down in verse 25, I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved. So in other words, when the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, then Israel's going to be saved. And it doesn't even say that there's a rapture that's going to cause this to happen here either. But this is the where the verses they go to. Now stop and think of it. If you never heard any view before, which is what you should do with everything you're being taught, take what's said to you, go to the scriptures they're saying that their belief is are found in, and look at those scriptures say, is that belief really there? Is there really a rapture that's going to take place? Then God's going to turn to Israel, and, and that's going to be the beginning of the 70th week. First of all, it doesn't say anything about any weeks in Daniel in Romans 11. Secondly, all it says is Israel, the ones that don't believe, are blinded until the fullness of Gentiles be coming, and then Israel would be saved. And so all Israel shall be saved. Well, where's their rapture mentioned there? Why do they think the fullness of the Gentiles be come in is the rapture? And, and they say that Israel has nothing to do with the church. But yet, we, right at the top, Paul said, did God cast away his people, referring to Israel? He said, God forbid, I'm also an Israelite. I'm of the seed of Abraham. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. And Paul was in the church. Are you kidding? Paul wrote most of the New Testament for the church. And he said, God hasn't cast away his people. So it says nothing about Israel not being in the church. That is insane. It's just saying most of the Israelites in that day were blinded. And that blindness is going to continue until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So if Israelites were in the church, the day of Pentecost was nothing but Jews in Jerusalem. Uh, Acts chapter 8 was Samaritans, which is... Israelites mixed with Gentiles and their descendants, the Samaritans, they were half-breed. Uh, then Acts 10 was when the Gentiles came in. So that was years from the day of Pentecost until the Gentiles came in in Acts chapter 10. And it was nothing but Israelites. And then after there was Israelites there, then half-Israelite people, the Samaritans, came in. And then later, much later, years later in Acts 10... Then Gentiles came in. So this idea that the fullness of the Gentiles is the rapture of the church is nonsense. Like, where do you actually stop and think of it? Where do they get that this is talking about the rapture? I mean, forget, look for yourself. Look with your own eyes. How could that be a rapture? What they do and what they're doing is saying that the church is Gentile and Israelites aren't involved in it. When the first several years was nothing but Israelites and but they've got to do that and to make their doctrine work. Meanwhile, fullness of the Gentiles to them means that means when all the churches come in, when all the Gentiles, because God's only dealing with Gentiles in the church. Well, you know something? I know many Jewish people that are in the church. I know a man I work with. His mother is Jewish. She's in the church. And they say that's the rapture because only Gentiles are in the church. So when the Gentiles' fullness has come in, that means the church is raptured. Well, Prove to me, first of all, that the church doesn't include any, gen any Jews. And then I can show you in Ephesians 2 that the church is made of Jew and Gentile together in one body. That's the church. Ephesians 2 says it in plain language.